Welcome to Albion TV presents the AO Daily Show, your source of real news in an unreal world. Keeping up to date on the latest news, events, and the great community of Albion Online. Today is Tuesday, the third. Oh, wait. Vogel. Today is today is the is is not Tuesday. It is the Wednesday, the fourth of March, twenty twenty. And I am your host, Chosen. And with me today, as always is Bogle. How are you doing today, Bogle? I I did. I I did. That's exactly what happened. I 100% uh, opened the wrong notes at the very last minute. Whoops. Well, now we're here. Now we're, now we're live. <laughs> Things happen. So, yeah, it's 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 been a, a fun day. Uh, we just watched some ZVZs. We had Robin Hood in with us earlier, and he uh, he voiced his displeasure at hand-holding here in the world of Albion, didn't he? Was How is that possible? The, the game of Albion is perfect. I don't know what he was talking about. Oh, the game is perfect, Bogle. But the guilds at the top, oh. they're a bunch of hand-holders like, oh my God, their palms are so sweaty. And there's one of the worst hand-holders of them all. There's Fun Stealer right there. He's been hand in, holding hands longer than anybody. <laughs> but we have we have more than just talk of what we just watched and talk of hand holding we have queen patch five six both six yes. oh my god, <laughs> god today I'm is wednesday the... today is uh when stuff usually gets patched <laughs> um, is it really patch six bogle yes yeah, been six weeks since queen so it must be we've six. had a patch every week for six weeks and i don't even know what patch it is uh for those of you who noticed there is no camera on me today, I'm a little under the weather and uh, under a lot of cold medication. I did get the Pax flu, so <laughs> sorry <laughs> for being a little bit off. Wow, Bogle patch six, you say? Yes, sir. <laughs> um, so that's what we want to talk about today. We want to look at the patch notes. We want to talk a little bit about what that means in the grand scheme of things. Um, we uh, also, however, want to first do our usual spiel of a few reminders and PSAs that we do at the beginning of the show. Um, a thing that we have been talking about for a, a while and mentioned a few times is that uh, Mythaseria, one of our great community managers, is still looking for forum moderators. Uh, there is a thread on the official forums and if you uh, know somebody or if you want to uh, apply for that position yourself, then why not go ahead uh, if you speak one of these languages, English, German, French, Russian, Portuguese, Turkish, Spanish, Polish, or any other random language that they might have not, you know, thought of. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we need mods too, Bogle. Who's we? You and I. Oh, so yes, yes. I'm going to do something right now that is a, is a scary thing, Bogle. And I've been meaning to do this for a while, oh, no. but I think it's time. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going over the to the community. I'm going to the roles manager. Uh-huh. And you're back and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm adding a new person. No. Wait, you're making mods randomly? Chosen. No, this yeah. is not randomly. This is somebody who deserves it. Um, I'm very sorry that I've done this to the rest of you. Fun Stealer is our newest moderator. Congratulations, Fun Stealer, <laughs> on your new position here at Albion TV. Try try not to abuse it. <laughs> oh, everybody's like, what the fuck? All right. Oh, 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 God. I, I've been telling him I was going to do it for a while, and... Uh, yeah, uh, I warned him a, a couple of times that it would happen. But thank you, Fun Stealer, for all the great information that you give us. You you are the part of the internet that proves me wrong every single day. Um, you simply mod by when somebody puts up something that you can clearly see is inappropriate, you say no. And then I don't have to do it. So I don't have to read the inappropriate chat while I should be reading patch notes and knowing what day of the week it is and uh, which patch we're on. All those things are easier when I have some great mods that go ahead and help my, you know, just and, and Bogle, you know, Bogle is always working with that camera. I know some of you think that we don't do much here and that it's not uh, anything that 
you know, that should be proud of. But God damn, Bogle, we do a lot of work. Sometimes, and, yes, yes. No, and now we're giving a little bit of that work away to fun stealer. We might add more mods over time. Uh, we and, will. And, I actually and... have a, I have a few other players I would like to uh, regular viewers that I would like to add as uh, as mods in the very near future. Um, but I want to do it when I see them here oh, instead of like that. announce it before they're here. Because, you know, I feel like that was fun for Fun Stealer. <laughs> I feel like the the audience kind of like uh, like it, too. So. All right. And on to the rest of news. Bogle. Yes. What other PSAs do we have? Uh, that's actually all we had for PSAs. In case you missed it, there was a Queen Patch 5 last week. And that's sort of the... Uh, jumping off point of today's show uh, last week we did have the introduction of not only the siphon energy drain some smart cluster queue changes the zerg debuff changes um, mm -hmm. and other things but that sort of made me realize like i mean i should have known it earlier i suppose but we're in this weird weekly patch schedule now chosen where it's like every week is, is that a thing now are we well, doing I, well, patches now? for now for sure mm -hmm. and it's because that there are things that need to be fixed one of the when you make an mmo it's very different than any other kind of game it's a living breathing game and a lot of what you think is going to do one thing turns out to do something slightly different and one of the things i've really enjoyed about working here at sbi is that they constantly strive to deliver what they say they're trying to deliver on a theoretical level, like the, the actual thing might have to change, right? But when they look at the big picture of what they're trying to do, that idea has always stayed. It's always continued to be the focus. And they're working to make this work. I know that there are people who are upset because they didn't remove alliances. I know there are people who are upset because they for whatever reason there's just people who are upset Shows that they I'm upset removed because they don't have transport contracts yet bogle i'm upset i i'm who could i can where can i complain unfortunately i believe it's me <laughs> so chosen <laughs> why Ugh. yes bogle tell me please tell me i will uh i will i'll bring it in i'll write it down Right, and then mm -hmm. I'll send it to the devs, and I, you can yeah. you can post it oh, on, yeah. this, on the are you forums. Saying, are you yeah. saying you'd actually use the suggestion forums instead of just hammering me with uh, Discord messages at three a.m.? I did that in two thousand fifteen. All right, let's let's talk about the Queen Patch Six shows in today because that <laughs> is what we are really getting today. off topic here. Yes, I mean, we yes, uh, yes. we've been fun, but it's we have to talk about some of these changes. I really want to talk about the the changes to Lou. Do you, uh, I mean, first things first, we have this great screenshot. I, I never, it's, it's cool. Uh, this is like the perspective. That's a different perspective. And I, yeah. I always just want to point that out because the art department does a great job and I can okay. never, ever say enough how much I really, really like their stuff. Um, but that's not the point. The point is actually patch notes, right? There is this little article on the front page, uh, that is about pitch six and the changes there but we here at Alman TV are sometimes diving very deep in the the weeds I think that's how you say mm -hmm. it and we, we have to look at the patch notes not at this flimsy news article shows it yeah uh fun stealer wants to know something really quick because I think this is important so we tell him how it works yeah you time out is like just a, a quick you said something wrong it times them out for a little while and it'll delete the message you'll be fine but if you ban them it deletes all their messages and if you ban them, please have have a good reason. Watch fun still time on everybody now. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. So, no. Sorry, I'm doing I'm doing live management here. We have to do this sometimes. It is this is the difference between a Twitch show and a YouTube video, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We we talk to you guys and you know we care about what's going on with your interaction with us. We don't need fun stealer deleting all of Pando Baron's messages for the last two years. That would be wrong. We might make, all right. Can we talk about that patch now? Yeah, let's do that. So let's, I'm, I'm, I've got the patch notes in front of me. Elite dungeon changes. Uh, my first thing is the Alliance rejoin cooldown. Are you looking at the patch notes or are you looking at the news? 
Because I'm looking at the news. I want to look at the the patch notes because that's okay. All of, I will do that. All okay. That's the changes in news is just the highlights, sort of. Okay. I'm here with you now. All right. Um, Alliance rejoin cooldown changes. Um, that's not so much of a big deal. It's sort of the continuation of Queen Patch Five and the adjustments to, uh, you know, sort of trying to prevent the creative use of this banning an alliance or leaving your alliance or your guild or whatever and that always um is how do you say enticing to do if you have a short-term advantage and that is just the the final step in that sort of cooldown prevention of just guild hopping or alliance hopping to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. get a advantage for a fight and then just you know rejoining slightly after yeah i <laughs> I have mixed feelings on this because I think it works at the upper levels, mm -hmm. but we have to figure out something to do about players at low levels who, uh, who, who need this, not this joining a rejoining. Absolutely. Seven days, but we currently have the issue with newer players. And when they go to join a new guild, they have a delay. And when you are new, you need to be able to get out of that guild that you were in and find a new guild as soon as possible. And so, working on it because mm -hmm. this is, is a good change uh, because at the top level this is a problem yeah uh, chosen is, is referring to uh, some of the crossroads trapping guilds that sort of say hey come to my guild join my guild be my friend and then actually pay a 15 percent tax thank you very much oh wait you're complaining goodbye um, and that's not for these guys and these should have a different approach i agree i agree uh, Starseed, uh, I would like to write that down. Uh, send that to me in Discord so I don't have to. Knockdown loot loss changes chosen. This is big, yes. Right? This this is... this is the one when I wanted to talk about something. I was like, okay, guys. So, items without a durability stat will no longer be, destro be destroyed upon knockdown. Previously, the following behavior occur occurred: items with a durability. Items with durability uh, had fun. It's not into words, Bogle. This is just, how do you read? I'm going to have to make these into sentences. Come on, guys. Wandering mobs. Items with durability suffer a 5% durability loss, and items without durability, 10% were destroyed. After the patch, items with durability will suffer a 5% durability loss. There's no change. But items without durability are immune to destruction. What's an item that is that doesn't have durability? Runes, resources, souls? runes, souls. Uh, what else? Uh, luxury goods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, why? Why home? is that a good change? And why um, was it made? Because all those things that we just said, mm -hmm. uh, without but without the resources there, all those other things are the kinds of rewards that you would get inside of an elite dungeon. And people are bad at these, right? <laughs> Meaning, I, they okay, get I want to. Out I want to say somebody and like uh, out a specific player on this and say, yeah, yeah, they are. They sent me a video of them dying six times, and the actually it wasn't a video. My what, bad. They said. Oh, so they said. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So they said, "What you need to do is come watch me right now. I'm going against the top mobs in the game, the top bosses in the game. Come watch this and record this for me." Um, and, and I did, and I watched them get wiped six times, and I was like, "Ah, oh, that's gotta hurt." And then. I was informed about what that did to the loot that they got the entire time going up to that boss. And so, uh, that I, mean, they... I, I felt for the guys, I felt for the guys because you know, you want to fight difficult battles and you want to get good loot for doing it, but you don't want to have to, find a situation where you get all the way to the end boss and have to make the decision of, do I take a shot at learning the behavior of this boss and learning how to fight this boss and the skills that are going to be necessary to beat it? Or do I take my cool loot home? Hmm. 
I, I like it as well. I think it's a good thing. Um, it also changes uh, the behavior of the game in a very different area, which is in yellow zones. Mm -hmm. mm, and here we sometimes have the situation that a bunch of people carry resources for whatever reason. It might be new players, right? It might be people it's who are transporting. It's often new players who don't understand, like... Uh, okay, so Bogle, we've talked about this, my obsession with the crossroads, my obsession with getting people from the early levels to the mid levels. Mm. It's becoming a problem, guys. I I need to start figuring out when to sleep. But yes, there are players who don't know that they're not supposed to get all the resources they can, buy a horse for an extraordinarily high price, get all the resources they can fit on that horse buy an ox for a very high price and then put all the resources they can on that ox and then go out and then get like just knocked down by some guy who flagged red in a yellow zone and his four buddies and then they lose 10 hmm. percent of everything they've done in 35 seconds because they're in like t4 gathering and I, it, it's not that what they lost had value to anybody Except but it had value mood, to yeah. them and it was like their learning process and their their getting things going process was just taken away from them and they just don't they don't want to keep going and they never learned that this process of lo losing stuff doesn't have to be that painful you can gain 3 sets of gear in a day and lose 3 sets of gear in a day and be fine with your personal economy and never have to worry about it but it takes some learning to get there and eventually you hope to be able to not have to die like um, over and over again. But it takes time to get there in that first, what I hope is a 10 hour experience that sometimes can turn into a three week experience. It, 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 losing during that period before you learn like the way this game works is, is just incredibly painful and anything we can do to, to ease that like like you hear I'm, I'm way too nice to these players wait let's move on all right respawn penalty in hideouts <sighs> people are gonna start thinking i care about them and shit this is not the way oh all right God. respawn penalty in hideouts bogle this is yours um basically uh, there is a timer in place now that in case you frequently respawn at your hideout for whatever reason, maybe dying over and over again, trying to defend it, just equipping some sort of suicide build, <clears throat> um, wasn't seen as super cool. So there is the idea, right? We need some sort of penalty that uh, these sort of suicide strategies become less viable. Mm -hmm. um because if you imagine that situation usually when when it's hideout knockdown time there is a lot of people clumped uh, very closely together around the hideout um knocking on that thing and then just zoning out getting all the aoe uh you know benefits of hitting multiple targets uh, right and then it's it's the risk reward is kind of off potentially there um so i think that's why it was introduced um, and yeah, you have now a penalty when you respawn again, you have 30 seconds. If you th respawn a third time, 60, fourth time, 120, fifth time, 240. And if you don't do anything uh, respawning wise for 10 minutes, then you just are back to zero. But yeah, well, that's, that's the thing is it doesn't look like this is overly punishing except for a very specific instance. This is one of those things where it looks like we're, oh, nope, they got that right. They got that one right. I like this one. This is exactly what I would like to see. I just heard a great story about how um, Blue Army, Blue Army Freeman and Aggressor traveled 15 zones to go fight. I, I want to say it was TC. Uh, take care. Uh, over a hideout. And they lost to TC who were using this strategy of uh, like Whirlwind um bop helm and uh wind wall uh some other different things mixed in there we've seen some very interesting uses like the 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 holy staff that just bops everybody away i can't remember which one that is right off the top of my head but there were some really interesting strategies that 
you could do for pretty cheap that were very, very effective. And you'd get killed and you'd die. But this just prevents the the worst of it. Still, I think it's still somewhat a, vad, uh, a valid strategy. But now you're going to have to use some communication and like some tactics with the teams that you're sending out to do this and make sure that they go through the portal at the right times in like the correct order to do the the most um, disbursement of the enemy as possible and have the fewest deaths because you now you can't just send 15 guys out and have them regear and then run back out, run back out, run back out. Now you need like a star seed level of um, whatever like you're going personnel to manager. Personal manager. No, no, I no, I've already seen it happen. Oh. I was watching, I believe it was Sun doing it, and they were having groups go no, through I the meant portal at once. Star seed. Star oh, seed yeah, for the average player. Yeah, no, the average player can't do that. <laughs> Multiple sources have told me Star Seed, best GM in game. Um I, I oh, and by the way, I did my Boy Scout uh, uh honor thing, you know, where you, it means you're like you're swearing on things. So it means I didn't lie. The rest of this time, guys. <laughs> Fake news. Um, travel cost modifier. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the changes to this. Um, it it says the that these were adjusted, right? So a travel cost modifier is the extra silver you have to pay when you fast travel, right? So if you go to the the travel uh, dude, uh, I don't. Need, travel planner at the city and you want to you know travel to another city there's a certain silver price that is different depending on what you are carrying higher stuff is more expensive um because you know the hope is of course that it's a pvp game and you need to move stuff and you can't just teleport around willy-nilly mm -hmm. um but uh, there was a problem where some of these were uh, tuned too high because they were also applied to stuff that uh, got teleported back to the city when you lose uh, a hideout or yeah. stuff that's in a hideout uh and that's um they did an adjustment here and they're still working and trying to figure out the best way to do this this is a first step in reviewing these modifiers um yeah and it's things are really changing. important notice here guys though it's the first step it's the very first step. they understand that the cost of retrieving your stuff from the hideouts is off but they can't break the naked travel in the process they have to figure out how to do this step by step again living game don't want to screw up everything to fix one thing got to be careful and uh, I believe they're doing a great job. Uh, this is a good first step. They know that this is off. We've seen some ridiculously high retrieval costs on there. And you're just like, I can't get those tomes. I, 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 I'm not getting any of my tomes back, man. I'm not paying for that. Elite Dungeon and I'm not getting any of that T3 stone either. That T3 stone is way <laughs> ridiculously overpriced. Are you kidding me? Hundred thousand silver stuff. All right, elite dungeon changes. Uh, Avalonian artifacts. Bogo, what do we got here? Tell me about what we're we're getting with these artifacts. Uh, more. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? All Avalonian bosses, uh, boss chests now have a chance to give a lot of Avalonian artifacts. Uh, you get slightly fewer from the final boss of the elite dungeon. Um, but overall, the drop rate of Alonian artifacts uh, has been sort of doubled, approximately. And in the same uh, sense, the health and damage of the Avalonian enemies was reduced, nerfed by 14%. That should also mm. mean that this, this content is easier to uh, do and people should get, you know, things quicker, easier, faster, more. So that's like... So it sounds like you're just going to leave these dungeons with better rewards now on a number of levels. Mm -hmm. One, everybody is giving more, except for the final boss, who if you generally got to the final boss and you started fighting him, meant that you'd get less of the stuff you had before and you had to rely primarily on the loot from the final boss to make it worth it. But by that time, the only loot you were getting was from the final boss. So overall, the entire dungeon felt like meh. And then now, no, now you get to keep all the, the loot. Uh, you get more loot overall and uh they're a little bit easier to do sounds like a very um care bear patch to me i <clears throat> care bears i mean uh i have 
heard a bunch. I mean, I remember some of the testing that was done, uh, like what two, three months yeah, ago, absolutely. which ran at you know eight three gear, and I was like, mm-hmm. oh, well, and and then no. it, it sort of turned out that they might have been a little bit overtuned. This this is necessary, but on, honestly, I want us to have content that is so hard that they need to to tune it this way because nobody likes it when you try to make things harder. Like if you try to make it harder, then everybody just complains. But if it's too hard to begin with and like fewer people can do it and then eventually you get to the place where, you know, it, it works, that that's kind of cool. That That's all right with me and, yeah, I, and I'm but... okay with that. And now I go the other way when I'm talking about other kinds of changes. Sometimes I believe you just rip that bandaid off, but difference in opinion on that one. We're fine with that. Drawing a raffle. Oh, I don't raffles too. Yeah. MacDatho, you have won a raffle. And Jeffro. Oh, Jeffro, that's a nice uh, icon you got there. I like it. Pretty good. Okay. So, Bogle, as we were saying, uh, so we have those elite dungeon changes. Those all sound awesome. I think they're good for people. People go out and do those dungeons now. Not enough people are, you know, I, I, I want more people doing them. And I think that if you can get the rewards back home, that's incentive enough to do them. I don't think that they were worth doing when you couldn't get your rewards. I think they didn't change much. Uh, one, two, three English. I don't. I don't think they changed anything at making it easier to get stuff home. It's just easier to get it. Well, no. I mean, <laughs> you you can bring more stuff home. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, I know. Like, I and, know. And, and and theoretically now it is easier to bring your loot home because. If you were somebody who wanted to be, if you're a completionist like myself, when I go into a dungeons, I want to get to the end. I want to get, I want to kill the boss. Uh, the costs are irrelevant. I, I'm in it for the content. And then the rewards, I go, okay, this is with my rewards. Well, crap. But if it gets to the point where I'm doing my content and the rewards are get are cool, then rewards start to being an incentive to get me to want to do more of that content. And I can see this happening now, and I am going to try to get my guys to go out next Saturday and maybe do one, because uh, it, it's been it's been, geez, it's been four weeks since I went out and tried to do one, and uh, I need to go again. So, especially if I can bring back my loot, because my guys, we, we, Shiro had nothing on us. We were we were dying to the to the polls, man. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, but we didn't talk about, I think, the one of the, I don't know if it's the biggest one yet, but for the, it might very well be the... You're right. They changed the visibility of the steel plate cougar from hidden to locked on the on the Mount UI skins. That's... And, and they changed that players can now join the smart cluster queue while mounted. I think oh. that was an issue for some people, especially battle mounts. Oh, oh. Yeah, of course. I know that. Was, I'm just having fun. Um, yeah, that's going to be very helpful to people actually getting into the zone and fighting on their battle mount. Like if you're, you don't want to have to, like you get into the zone and the battle mounts take forever to freaking get on top of, you're trying to get on top of your mammoth, uh, could be a problem. And if there's a fight on the other side, which there often is like, there's often like going to be a fight pretty quick when you get in on the other side you already want to be mounted you want to be able to spray your lizard's acidic breath all over those guys and you know what is crying gonna do if he can't get on that lizard i'm just saying any other fixes you want to talk about here because we have some general fixes fixes did i lose you bogle I just muted myself because I, I got sent something. I was clicking around. I was, no, I don't want to talk about the rest. These are just, I think, not super important. Okay. But I'm looking for something uh, that Frank just sent me that I think we wanted to talk about anyways. Um, we not only have the patch notes today, we also mm-hmm. found some dev comments that we wanted to highlight today, which is... Um, comments to some uh, ongoing discussions that we just wanted to mention briefly. Uh, we do have two things from Mythoseria that I want to talk about. Uh, one sort of leak from Altharion um, and one reminder for everybody to take part in. Uh, but first things first, 
I uh, want to show that there was a little bit of a complaint. Uh, it's in regards to the Hellgate ratting uh, mm -hmm. issue. And Mythoseria went to post that the devs are aware of this and they are currently looking into solutions for that. And I know they have already been for like a few. <sighs> if I say now they have been looking into this for a few weeks now, then people will be like, eh, but this has been a problem for, you know, um, but now it's definitely on the priority list. It's actively getting looked at and no ETA, of course, um, but just a little reminder that this is on the table. Mm. Yeah, that ratting. I think we should have called this the season of the rat. I really do. I'm, I'm still a little upset about that. Season eight, not the title I would have gone with. <laughs> season of the rat. Did you know that? Of course, you know, Bogle. It's the year of the rat. Chinese calendar, yeah. Yeah. So I think I, I think we need to just, it's we, we just go, need to go full uh, sellout oh God, and yes. just make the in-game events according to the Chinese calendar to sell out to the Chinese. <gasps> okay, well, here's the thing, Bogle. If we made our seasons, just saying, I'm just saying, if we made our rotating yearly seasons based off of like that calendar, I could come up with themes for each one of them and it would be pretty cool. But let's not no junior game developer today we have lots of news we can talk about the news we can talk about that in the future speaking of in the future bogle oh wait yes. no I'm, first I'm, we got the, the it. time zones you're showing the time zones yes the yes the ui team is looking into adding some sort of display for time zones on the map uh Yes, finally. <clears throat> and that means that you can see what's going to happen in the very near future right next door because then you won't have to click on it. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Um, the next thing I want to do last because I, I, Frank just linked me something on Twitter that I need to find first if that's real. Okay. Um, All right. So th th this one, this one's last. We're not going to eh, – I'll highlight it in a color and you can just I, – I want to show you know, the current yes. state of gathering focus topic thing first. Right. Retroman went to the general questions and discussion forums and started a focus topics. Uh, focus topics are sort of a call for participation, a call for joining and uh, helping the devs out or just providing feedback <laughs> as much as you can. And there is uh, still some disagreement on whether or not gathering is in a good space right now. They recently changed some of the tier eight and seven node behavior, uh, the the you know the nodes spawning full versus um, yeah I think with one, um, and that caused some more discussion. And now they're just looking for a broader stroke of feedback, I think, to figure out whether or not that's a good change or bad change or whatever you think. And you can look at this uh, post and and answer some of these questions. There are seven different questions and uh, feedback appreciated if you can take a minute or two to fill this out. Yeah. Um, ooh, sorry about that. I had just a, a bit of a coughing fit behind the scenes here. Um, I would like to see another go at gra uh, gathering. We've talked about this in the past. Um, gathering needs to still feel fun. It needs to be slightly tweaked we've talked about how we want to see people like live in their zones and gather from their zones and feel like their zone is the only i want to feel like that the only place you need to be if you're a gather is in the place you live not have to run 15 20 zones to just try to find the shinies and stuff i would much rather see a situation in which people live there and gather around their own homes but Currently, I don't think that's the way that it's rolling, is it, Bogle? Yeah, I think um, some of the complaints is that people aren't finding enough nodes. And then my personal question is whether or not it's because of the spawn balance of nodes and the distribution of nodes and um, you know how the avail availability is versus uh, the idea of how many people you just jammed into your zone. Um, mm. For example... Mm if I'm thinking about a, a zone that should be full all the time, I'm thinking, for example, of the Valon um, home or, you know, Alliance hub zone where there is, I think six different guilds put their hideout down in one zone. Yeah. Uh, and each of these guilds have like what, 200 something members or more. Mm -hmm. 
and then wondering about whether or not you get enough stuff in that zone is is weird because you know too many people um but i think there's a strong enough undertone that some of the far out zones with no not that much people might have something to look at as well um I, i'm not i'm not quite sure where i i don't gather as much i have to be honest <laughs> Yeah, uh, I used to my for a long time uh, after I had to leave my first I was uh, GVG and ZVZ. Then I had to go to ganking because I lost my my guild and my guild became much smaller. So we became ganking guild. And then I started working for the company. And I was like, I probably shouldn't kill people every day. So I became a gatherer and market flipper. And then I was like, oh, I work for the company. I should probably stop flipping the market. Um now, now I go out and I do PVE Bogle. So I, I don't even know what's going on in gathering anymore. Mm -hmm. I, and I feel bad about this. And this was, this was one of my favorite things to do was, was gathering. I really enjoyed it back in the day. I was a leather gatherer myself, leather and uh, stone. As you can tell by my Marty character, love Marty. <laughs> uh, but the final thing today before we look at shoutouts and and uh, have to end the show today is the thing we sort of wanted to leak from the roundtable chosen, but actually Robin leaked it himself. He's a good leak. He's good at leaking. I like it. First things first, who is Robin? Eltharian, a.k.a. Robin Henkes, our CEO and lead game designer, game director. With one of the most awesome Twitter profile pictures I've ever seen, I have to say. Um, I gotta tell you, he looks like somebody told him to put on the hat and take the picture. And he was like, do I have to? And they're like, yeah. And he's like, I don't want to do this. And then he took like, say it was your niece, like it's his niece made the hat and he didn't want the picture mm -hmm. taken. Mm -hmm. But it's it. I, but then, you know, he sees the picture, how it looks. And he's like, nope, that's how I feel about Twitter. And then his niece went into his account and uploaded it. And then he's like, well, no, no, he uploaded it himself because he saw it and he knew that was exactly the emotion he felt about Twitter. Because I got to tell you, he's expressing how I feel about Twitter. Like right now, <laughs> I, I love that picture. I got to tell you, it's fantastic. Uh, and I enjoy it. He just went on Twitter to say we are having some breakthroughs with <laughs> uh, when it comes to the development of Albion's next content update. Going to start writing up the next roadmap post and desktop script tomorrow i think hoping to show oh, no. these next week <laughs> roadmap guys next week nice mm -hmm. uh-oh you know what that means bogle roadmap show roadmap show and we're gonna have to have this man on the show oh did did yeah. does he have time to the show <sighs> Oh, the man <laughs> does not have time to do much of anything. Uh, he's a busy, busy guy, but I was going to say we'd try to nail him down, but I don't think that'd be fair. I think we can just ask him to come on in and be very, you know, please. <laughs> the audience would love to hear from you and we'd love to to chat about this fantastic roadmap. And then he's going to be like, um, you can't ask any questions this time. And then he will tell us the roadmap again, because last time he did this. Remember what happened to Bogle? Uh, you tricked him into saying things, I think. Tricked him? Tricked him? Uh, ask oh, journalistic that... <laughs> questions. <laughs> yes, I, I, I asked I asked questions that he chose to, instead of saying, I can't say anything, he chose to answer. I'm going to, before the, the interview, we're going to go over it, and I'm going to say, here are some acceptable answers. You can say yes, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, things to look forward to. Nice. Uh, not only uh, if, if this is really a weekly patch schedule, we will have another patch. Um, I know the the Hellgate ratings thing, and uh, we're also due for another balance patch soon, I think. Yeah, I, I know Retro Man is hard at work. And I do want to confirm that we have different people working on fixing our current issues than we have working on the next thing. The, the, the way that our things work is that i can't i can't go into all of it, all of it but yes we still have a team currently working on the current issues and we have uh people working on the next patch already and have been and the you know the design phase has been underway these guys 
are a fully functioning MMO development studio. Did you know that? <laughs> they've uh, actually been doing it now for, they've been doing it long enough now to probably get like a shield at Blizzard. I mean, I think, you know, we got to get our own, I think we need a staff and some Judy boots to put on the wall. Um, I need my Judy boots. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to hearing about this round table. I have, I know a little bit that's coming out on it. I'm excited. I want to talk about it. I've wanted to talk about it, but when he's been saying that there was going to be a, um, you know, a roadmap coming out really soon, I didn't want to talk about what I thought might be on it and then find out that I was wrong. So I'm, I'm, I'm now just waiting to, to find out from the man himself, hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, we will definitely cover that here on the show as we uh, see it released and then do a whole uh, show of speculation and hopefully even an interview if we can get the man into a room. <clears throat> um, Chosen, shout outs and then we're out of here or do we have other news to talk no, about? No, I, I don't think we have any other news. Um, we well we do have some shout outs and what's going on later in the week we have an interview with artista which was really good we're going to have some more gvz shows this week uh i think we're gonna we have tentative plans to do a sunday show this week because oh, yeah uh the faction warfare that people have been setting up has just been really really good um it, it's been really fun content and a lot of people came to watch it and uh I don't have any plans this weekend. Hmm. I, I plan to relax and just chill and maybe breathe for a little bit. But then I heard that this stuff was going off. And my my number one goal is to bring you the audience, the players of Albion, the absolute best content that we can find and show it to you every single day, no matter when it is or how it happens within some reasonable limits of like, I'm not asking my guys to get up at two o'clock in the morning and show you guys stuff. Cause you think it's cool, but we're going to try to do that Sunday. I think. Um, yeah, it's, it's the faction fight discord. Uh, the, we showed it last Sunday as shows inside. You can watch it in the VODs. Uh, I know that they're not happy with the castle timer thing. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're, the exact time isn't fixed yet, but look around if you're curious. Um, it's basically a bunch of guilds flagging up for one of the cities and then go, all going to one zone and then having this huge fight in one zone. Um, yeah, for maybe hopefully Sunday night-ish. 18, 19, 20 UTC-ish, ish, ish. Okay. Yeah. We'll figure it out. I mean, we, we have, what, two more days to tell you guys what's going on. We'll be back again tomorrow. Probably about 18 UTC for that ZVZ fight. Do those prime times. And we'll be back again at 19. And then on Friday, I don't know what our exact schedule is going to be on Friday. I'll have to talk to Robin, see when he, when he is available. That's Robin Hood RS. There's, too many there's a lot of Robins. Too many Robins. All right. It's a good thing I didn't start singing there. <laughs> um, now, yeah. I hope you all have it stuck in your head. Just a little rock and robin in your head. Tweety dee. Dee 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 dee. Okay. Um, yeah. So we're going to have to talk to him, see what time on Friday we're going to be doing the ZVZ action, but we will still have the 19 UTC Daily. AO Daily Show. And we're going to have, have, a, have an interview? Yes, we will have an interview with the GM of the best guild in the game, according to the rankings. And not only will we talk about whether or not he thinks that is the case, that they are the best guild in the game, but we will also have some other interesting topics of discussion, potentially starting a war as well. We're gonna start a war? Maybe. Yeah, we have Friday. Been, Maybe. We're really working on it. I, I, I'm going to say on the AO Daily Show and the ZVZ Show, we've been working really hard this week on starting a war, haven't we? Yeah, I'm getting a little worried. <laughs> that, but yes. Well, I, I'm going to tell you, I, I told Mojo really early on in the season, you know, I like you, buddy, but I'm going to tear down this alliance that you've gotten because I ain't liking it. It's not a thing I'm into. And he's like, yeah, but they're my friends. You can't make me fight my friends. And I said, no. And you know what I'm thinking now? 
I might be able to make his friends fight him. That's mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So well, that's... maybe how about this? His friends fight each other. I <sighs> and and he just eats popcorn. No. You know, I think he would honestly. I think he would absolutely eat popcorn and watch um, the moment that Artista ran into uh, conflict and just started shrekking them from behind for content's sake. Um, I think he might. I think he might just watch mm -hmm. and laugh. And the first thing that would happen is we know that Shiro would hop in on that right away and double time it on top of uh, Sex with X to make sure that he could get first place because it does matter to him. Exciting times yeah. ahead. Nah. Interview you know, Friday. Yeah. Event well, you know what we have to do? No. Raffle shout outs. It's, it... We only have it... two shout outs. People didn't want to shout out what? today. No shout outs. Well, just two. Hold on. We have the usual one that we, I feel like these guys should, should we, we need to run a banner or something for them, depending on what they pay. Because we do have another shout out from Albion News 24 that says, if you want to learn the game and want to and want content, check out Brave Newbie uh, and their website, uh, newbiealliance.com. 0% uh, tax-free gear uh, programs and extensive guides and mentor programs ride dangerously. I think we have shouted out these guys like every single show shows in. Well, you know what? They're hmm. fans of the show, and I kind of like what they do. I have actually, um, I will be, one of my projects in the next coming weeks will be to actually work with their mentor program, which goes out to the crosses and looks for new players trying to learn the game and helps them learn the process of the early parts of the game and gets them into the cities because that's where we're losing a lot of our players uh, because they just have a hard time getting through the beginning part and i i remember some of the people that we ran into during our times in alpha and beta who only needed a little bit of a hand and then became really 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 good players over time and i wonder how many of them would have just stopped if nobody had came over and gave them a hand and so i want to go and see what the experiences are of the new players and what is actually causing the problems that they're experiencing because i see the problems but I don't know exactly what's causing them from their perspective. So I'm going to go, I'm going to keep rolling some alts, going out there, doing it over and over and over again, maybe teaming up as a new player and going to see what their life is like, seeing what they're doing uh, and, and why, and see if we can't improve that aspect of the game. Uh, just as a little side project. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, then Never I suppose prepared. we keep shouting out newbie. Uh, uh. <sighs> I, I was trying to figure out some way we, you know, they have to pay us for sponsorship shows then. And then eh. we, we can just pretend it's normal. <clears throat> you know what? Uh, I, I think we could just say that the when you buy those points off of our stream, that's like, because you're, you're, you're paying for them with your time. Hmm. And time is money. So they're paying us with their theoretical money to get shout outs. And uh, I, I, I want more TOS, but no, maybe yeah. not. Well, it's theoretical. It's time is money. It's it's, it's, sure. it's not uh, real money. I, I'm, 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 I'm eating my head. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been there. Um, but also, I think, Bogle, we might need to lower the cost of the shout outs because as soon as I raise them, because I was like, we're getting like 40 shout outs a day. These might be a little cheap. I didn't even raise them by that much, but I ran them to the, I raised them to, you know, like 25% and people are like, nah, nah, nah. I got to keep my, my energy, man. I keep that in my pockets, my Albion points. I got to use those later. You, you, you never know when you could just buy yourself a Judy boot for a day. I'm going to go buy myself a Judy boot for a day. We have uh, the user rampant stuff asking, are we getting a new healing weapon tree? Uh, are we? I don't know. I have not if, heard that. If we knew, we couldn't tell. What kind of... That's true. You know, that actually, that is true. Even if I had heard, my answers would have been the same. Yeah. <sighs> Lucius Blake says Tea Party are recruiting. 
I hope Tea Party is recruiting. I hope Tea Party is doing really well. I like what they're doing up there. I always see them fighting. They have towers. They are a solo guild doing work. Uh, e even though Machete Bandit and I had a tiny little issue because he said I was being mean on a stream once, and in which case I had to start being even meaner so he knew that it just it's not him. It's me. Um, Machete, I really love what you do out there, man. And uh, it, it's good stuff up there. Keep doing it. Kushu83 says, Listen, I would, but problem is I'm lock it, locked out of my account and I can't get the activation key because I can't access the Gmail because the email is linked to my phone I used eight months ago when I was overseas in Singapore. Ah, uh, oh well. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That sounds like a familiar uh, problem that I've heard other people have, and I have no idea how to help with that. But with you? He put a bunch of smileys in there, so I don't think that was quite serious. Oh, okay. Because I... <laughs> oh, maybe he was making fun of... Okay. Okay. Mm. Tell me more about these shout-outs that we got. You shouted out somebody. Yeah, congrats to Fun Stealer, who now has the power to do so. Shout out? Oh, no, steal your fun. Oh. Because we made him a mod. Oh, all right. So, oh, I, I need to, <coughs> I, I need to physically step over this one because it's like on the floor crawl. Yeah. All right. I I got it. All right. Understood. Okay. Right. Yeah. It went so far over you that it's behind you and you have to get out of your chair to get it. I got it. Um, <laughs> Limon says, how many channel, <laughs> channel points to ban fun for a day? Uh, well, I'm sure if we just asked Fun Stealer to stop all fun that was going on in the stream, you'd all find that it happened very quickly. Um, to ban Fun Stealer for the day? We'll have to talk about that like... I like that in, idea. And I know the concept of, you know, paying, I don't know, like 5,000 channel points to time out somebody for like 10 minutes. I think we can, oh. I think we can do that. Could, like in, in ways to make it fun so that they could literally tell somebody else to shut up and then pay to make it so. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll talk. I, I'd, I'd want to. That's the thing I would put to a vote before, like we did that. I would ask the audience. <laughs> no, I no, I would. I get the little vote doohickey going up, and I'd ask the audience, "Is this something they're okay with?" Because that's a little bit on the goofy side, and it's fun, and I would like to do it. But at the same time, I understand that so many of our players here are, you know, here for other reasons, and I don't want to really mess up their joy with the show. I just want to time on everybody. I, I know, and that's why we talked about it, and that's why I made Fun Stealer a mod. All right, all right. Yeah, I, you asked me Baby who steps. did I think would do the most banning of anybody, and I said, well, well Fun Stealer. Mm. <laughs> yeah. All right, on that, I think we're done. Thank mm -hmm. you. And unless anybody else has anything else they want to ask, you can just do it here in chat. We have about 10 seconds. I'm going to pull a raffle, the last raffle of the day, and... Uh, Last questions of the day, I guess. Yeah. Um, we, well, I think we already went over our spiel. We, we talked about what we have. Uh, we'll be back here tomorrow at 18 for the ZVZ at, and at 19 for, I think, Newbie Thursday, right? That's what we're doing now. We, we move yeah. Newbie Tuesday from Tuesday to Thursday because Tuesday is kind of more newsy. And more newsy. And when we were looking at which, when I looked at it phonetically, Bogle, Fun Stealer okay. made a good point. Newsday Tuesday is better than Newbie Tuesday. It just it just flows better. Newsday Tuesday. I I like Last Week in Albion. I missed Last Week in Albion, but that was a Monday show. We'll have to go back to the writing board and figure this out. <laughs> True. We'll, we we've got time on Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll we'll talk about this again on Monday. But tomorrow is a uh, a Newbie Thursday show and we're going to be going what are we going over tomorrow is it group play activities you need uh more than one friend for uh, oh so maybe you need a guild maybe you need just a group of four 
friends or just a group of 200 best friends and then you can you know do all the juicy high level stuff in albion and i will will try to describe some of these for the new player audience (coughs) who might not know what a guild is well we can do that and we can do the how to get on board a guild and all that great stuff because i believe robin hood earlier was saying it's always better in a three-way right yep so yeah if you can get five way going on we five players doing it that way that is the way to do like hces and hell gates and then you need your your 10 players or, or more when you want to go out and do those zvz's maybe you get a whole guild and get like a 130 brave dudes like to, to hot dog party i don't i don't like these <laughs> hmm Hmm. Hot dog party? Mm-hmm. I, we gotta go. I think you're you're really looking at this the wrong way. Okay. So uh Danomite22, please message me. Dead lizard, I know you know what to do. Please message me, guys. I will hook you guys all up later this evening. I will be doing the gold codes for the last week and a half uh later tonight. Thank you guys for all tuning in. It was once again just a blast to bring you the show. And we will be back again tomorrow with two more shows, 18 and 19 UTC, right here, twitch.tv forward slash Albion Online. Peace. We're out. Bye.